This conference will now be recorded. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please, to open our meeting. Belinda and John. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that we do call this regular meeting of council to order on Wednesday, April 21st, 2021 at 6 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Our next item of business is the approval of the agenda. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. And that's moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that council does hereby approve the agenda as presented. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, the next order of business is item number four, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof, or declaration of conflict of interest. And council, you can do that now or at any time throughout the meeting when such a situation would arise. There being none now, I will continue on to the adoption of minutes. 5.1 is our regular council meeting minutes from March 17th. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and John. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021, as distributed. Any comments on the minutes? Okay, there being none, putting it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. And 5.2 is the special council meeting minutes from Wednesday, March 24th. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Horn Payne does hereby adopt the minutes of the special meeting of Council held on Wednesday, March 24th, 2021, as distributed. Any comments on the minutes? Okay, putting it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. And our next set of minutes are 5.3 special meeting, our special council meeting from Wednesday, March 31st. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John and Belinda. Moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the special meeting of council held on Wednesday, March 31st, 2021, as distributed. Any comments on the minutes? There being none, putting it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. And our last set of special council meeting minutes from 5.4, Wednesday, April 14th. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Horn Payne does hereby adopt the minutes of the special meeting of council held on Wednesday, April 14th, 2021, as distributed. Any comment on the minutes? Okay, there being none, I put it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed.
Okay, we have um, our next item on the, on the agenda is item six, which is deputation presentations, tender awards and open discussions. So 6.1 is our first presentation of this evening. And I don't see Miles, there I see Miles now. Welcome to our meeting, Miles. Thank you for attending. So, I have a few words to say and then I'll give you some time to speak if you like, Miles. Okay. Okay, sound good, okay. So I am um, very, it is my distinct pleasure this evening to be able to honor our fire chief, Miles Wallingford. It is National Volunteer Week as well, so this is a fitting occasion. And Mr. Wallingford is committed to our fire department. I reached out to his deputy fire chief, Mr. Marion Klazowski, for a few words to highlight his dedication. And uh, it's impressive. So from the endless phone calls at any time of day, the researching training and encouraging firefighters to get training and secure their training and advocate for them on behalf to us on behalf of them for funds for the fire department and for techniques new techniques and firefighting techniques to keep our community safe all the while he creates a positive atmosphere that is inclusive and everyone's concerns are valued Marion is also thankful for the positive influence you have had on both of his children, Journey when she was the secretary, and Briggs as a junior firefighter. Deputy Klazowski is proud to be working as your, as your deputy fire chief and alongside you. And Miles, you know that myself, your mayor, and council are deeply committed to the fire department and are proud of your accomplishments. We are so happy that you have been able to be recognized for 20 years of service and we have included a copy of your certificate with our agenda tonight. And I know that you received some special medals as well along with the certificate. And I have said it many, many times, volunteers and committed individuals to a community great people make great communities and you're one of them miles so thank you everyone for attending and i'd like to us all to give miles a round of applause before he speaks okay the floor is yours fire chief i don't have much to say i just i really appreciate this time and this uh, being noticed and, and i really uh, I really want to say I love the people I work with. Uh, I really, I really love the guys I work with. Uh, Marion and his family have all been uh, dedicated volunteers, and they're great to be around. And uh, and I, I, I appreciate council and and the hardworking staff at the uh, administration offices in Hornpain. They've really helped me out with this job too. And uh, and I just, uh, I just want to tell you, I love the guys. I love the people I work with, and I love the community. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Miles, for being here tonight and joining us. And uh, I look forward to seeing this uh, framed up for you. And uh, we'll get you your certificate. Thank you. Okay. And to our community, it's always a pleasure to honor volunteers in our community. And um, we, we hope to have it more of this happening in the future with all of our volunteers. So this is great. 20 years is a huge, huge commitment. Go ahead, Gail. Congratulations, Miles. I just wanted to add and, and let everybody know that this was uh, initiated by the members of the department. So that says that speaks loudly, I think, Miles, like they obviously admire you as a leader. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's great. And just again, thanks to your dedication. You've really I know how many hours you've put in in the last couple of years and it shows. Um, so we're here to help you and happy to have you part of the team. Thank you so much. Okay, and I will open if any other members of council would like to speak at this time before we continue on. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that and we'll move on to 6.2. 
Town Council is uh, receiving a presentation tonight from the Community Living Algoma. Leslie Wilson, Cindy Crawford, and Jennifer Wichar. Wichar, I'm sorry, Jennifer, if I'm messing up your last name. No, you're saying it perfectly. Oh, ace. So about the proclamation of May as Community Living Algoma Awareness Month. So I'm really excited that you're here tonight. I'm looking forward to your presentation. I don't know if you're aware, but um, some of our staff and town council has been involved with uh, Community Living Algoma with L. Uh, Condoluci's sessions that he's been doing and we uh, just received news that um, someone has been hired for our community so that's all great news so I give you the floor on um, tonight to start your presentation and uh, I'm not sure who's going to speak first. All right that would be me we have a little speech here so I'll go and read that Okay, is this Gordon Draper that's speaking then? Nope. This, no, is, Craig Holmes. this is Craig Holmes. Okay, sorry. I read from my um, agenda. So also is uh, Gordon Draper joining us as well tonight? No? Okay, so Craig Holmes is here with us. Go ahead, Craig. And, and who else? I'm missing oh. somebody else. Deborah Chadwick. Uh, and Deborah Chadwick. Okay, there we go. Go ahead, Craig. Sorry about that. No problem. All right, so here we go then. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Councilors, and fellow community members. We are proud to stand before you as the proclamation to announce Community Living Awareness Months as read. I am Craig Holmes, and joining me on this call today is Deborah Chadwick, and we are here on the behalf of Community Living Algoma. We are all members of the Council of Community Living Algoma. We are a group of individuals who speak out for change, advocating for ourselves within CLA and the community of Algoma. Community Living Algoma is a nonprofit charitable organization committed to the full inclusion and citizenship of people with intellectual disabilities. Now in its 68th year of operation, it provides services and supports over 720 children and adults in the district of Algoma. Community Living Awareness Month is also being recognized by Blind River, Corn Payne, Wawa, Elliott Lake, and Sault Ste. Marie. We're honored to share this recognition with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Craig. And I have the, it, would anyone else like to speak and, or we can move to pass the resolution if you like. Okay, I'm gonna put it out to council for a mover and a seconder, please, for the proclamation for Community Living Algoma. Peter and Belinda. Okay, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Whereas Community Living Algoma has provided supports and services to people with intellectual disabilities and their families in the township of Hornpain and surrounding district since 1954, and provides services to 333 adults and 388 children. And whereas Community Living Algoma's goal is that people with intellectual disabilities have every opportunity to participate fully in our community with dignity, independence, and acceptance. And whereas Community Living Algoma works with Horn Pain volunteers and other stakeholder groups and organizations to promote citizenship for people with intellectual disabilities. So they have the rights and responsibilities and the opportunities that come with belonging participating and contributing as a valued member of in society 
And whereas Community Living Algoma Awareness Month is a province-wide initiative created to celebrate the values of community living, which are inclusive, equality, and respect. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby proclaim the month of May 2021 as Community Living Algoma Awareness Month in the community of Hornpain. Council, I put up the motion for discussion. Any comments? Okay, there being none, I'll put it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Thank you for being with us tonight. And if there's no further comments or discussion from any of the members presenting tonight, Well, I, I don't see any microphones going off on mute, but I want you to know, go ahead, Gail. Yeah, Gail, Gail go ahead. Yes, Jennifer's just written in the chat. Uh, thank you, everyone. So thank oh. you, Jennifer and Craig and Deborah for coming. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay. I am honored that we're uh, proclaiming the whole month. I think that's a good thing and let's move on. And we're moving on to item seven and we have manager's reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. So I open up the floor to the first report, the CAO report. Gail, would you like to speak to your report before I open up for questions? Yeah, just a couple of things. I was going to mention um, that I saw the same information you did about the uh, caseworker uh, being hired for CLA to work locally in our community. So that's fantastic. And the other thing I got in word of uh, today by phone message was that we have been approved for uh, four students through the Canada Summer Jobs Program. Uh, we had applied for six, but four is four is good. So um, I'm going to get the paperwork behind that, but. Um, Hopefully we can make things work with COVID with our protocols that we had in place last year and uh, get some work done around the community. Okay, great. Thank you for those two initial updates. Council, I open up the floor for any questions for Gail. I don't see any questions at this time. I was just, uh, one question I did have about your COVID update. Are you going to be basically taking from your report for the COVID update uh, or can, or I was thinking of reading this part aloud? Um, uh, it's kind of, um, you know, you know what? But you you can read it. You can read it because I have other stuff I need to say anyways. It's not going to hurt if it's kind of mingled in. Okay. I'm doing this for the benefit of our community because uh, the biggest issue, this is from Gail's report, and you can see it in the agenda package as well. But I think it's imperative that we share 
uh, a piece of this report verbally so that people understand the magnitude of what our province is under right now with the rising cases of ICU beds and what's happening on the strain of our healthcare system. That um, with all the contact tracing, with the extra work, with the vaccination clinics rolling out, and then with the healthcare staff dealing with extra people within hospital beds, regular hospital beds, and then the ICU beds, what's happening is a strain is being made on our healthcare system. And when we talk about this healthcare system, we're talking about people. It's, a, it's people that make up that system. And we all know nurses, we all know doctors, we all know public health nurses and professionals and volunteers that work in this organization, even, even within the administration of the health units and the hospitals for that matter, that all of this is being strained and we need to continue working together to lessen the strain and bring the cases down. And um, I want to just read part of Gail's report here because I thought it was written eloquently and said it uh, point blank of what we need to do that uh, Gail cannot stress enough that the only way that the protocols are going to work is if each individual follows them. Everyone must be responsible within themselves for the good of the whole. She urges you to carry this message forward to our, for our small hospitals that they are not equipped to deal with any serious cases of COVID. And if the pace in Southern Ontario keeps up, there will be nowhere to send our own residents for care. The situation is serious. Let's keep from being becoming critical in our area. And um, I thank you, Gail, for putting that in the report. And I, I highlight that piece out because we do need to continue working together. I think we have on a whole have been doing a very good job, but this is not the time to drop our guard. And that's the only comments I have from Gail's report. Okay, if there's no other comments or uh, discussion on the report, we'll move on to the next report. Okay. And we have the client service manager's report. Melissa, did you have any comments you wanted to make to your report before I open up the floor to questions? No, I'm okay, thank you. Okay, great. Council, do you have any questions for our client service manager? Okay, I'm not seeing any right now from Council Melissa. I did have one question about the difference between MPAC requests for re reconsider applications. So it's significant then if MPAC is like at the tune of 255,000 plus, their assessments were off. So, or can you explain um, that part a bit better to me? <clears throat> One of them, uh, major, or actually two of them come from the ARB board. So the MPAC um, didn't agree, or the property owners didn't agree with MPAC, and then MPAC didn't change their assessment value. So it went to the ARB board. So they decided. So there were, in one of the properties, we lost um, $205,000 of property on one of our commercial buildings. And then um, another one was. Uh, it's offset with the other one because it was just a classification change. So it, it was written off and then supplemented back in. So it, um, there was one, or actually there was a few properties that uh, put it in for assessment review board for four years actually to change, um, just to get the education portion taken off. So the whole amount come, comes off and then the whole amount goes back in and, and then their education portion got written off completely because that now they are education exempt. Okay, okay. So this classification, the 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 amount that 255 approximately, so that's one huge business area and then um, a few residential properties? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, great. Because I was thinking that was all homes and I was like, whoa, no, no. We're, we're off the <laughs> mark here. Okay, okay. That that helps understand it. So in the total, so between the recouping like that we're going to recapture from um, the school boards or the school board, um, what is the, so the net loss includes that, that 68,000, does that include that? 
Am I reading no, that No, the right? 68,000 is just the municipal levy. The 47,000 is what we're going to be able to recoup from the school boards. Okay, so when this balance is all out, we're looking at about 20,000 loss because we're going to recruit some? Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Any other further comments uh, for Melissa from Council? Okay, there being none, we'll move on to our public Manager's report. Duane, do you want to speak to your report before I open up questions for council? Sure, yes. This does obviously this report does not include the storm from yesterday. <laughs> or or the or the fourth clinic, right? Or the fourth you know, clinic. Neil's <laughs> report said fours, yours said three. I was like, there's discrepancies. <laughs> Yeah. And what and what storm are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the one that starts to melt all over again. <laughs> the one that I couldn't get my car out of my driveway. It still snowed in. Oh. Okay. So is that that's the only update you have or uh, to add to your uh, report, Dwayne? Yes. Okay. I open up the floor to questions for council. Councillor Peroff. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to ask uh, Dwayne. Uh, you know, some time ago, we had talked about getting a new uh, mix or patch patchwork to fix the uh, fix the roads. Have we done that? No, we had taken that out last year to uh, hold off on it for the time being. Possibly to do it later. Uh, right now, we have cold patch. I have it behind the garage. We're ready to start patching potholes because we get them empty of water and snow now. There are some alternative me methods out there that we're going to check into to see what else is available. Some cheaper versions set of paving too, so I'll be looking into that stuff. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Peroff. Any other further questions from Council? Okay, I don't see any that any from council right now, Duane. I do have one. How did we do with our culvert situation behind the 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 big investment we made behind the value mart and in the parking lot? Is that working? Did there was there extra water gathering there this spring? Um, did we see any? Are we concerned about that area at all? No, it seemed to function quite well. Uh, there's one area of concern that I am going to look into. But apparently there was a side culvert coming into the main culvert and it doesn't look like it was draining into there this year but i'll look further into it whether or not that was put back into the system or not oh okay okay but other than that it's like we have no huge water build up in behind the value mart in that no nope, it did very well okay great i was um talking with a roads expert earlier this week and we were talking about the different um, weight that roads can carry and I never it never occurred to me that we do have a 18 wheeler that goes on that road quite regularly right yes yeah is there anything that um, I, I don't know I'm just wondering is there did we look at into anything about how that impacts that gravel road personally I did not it was done before the engineering was done before I was there Okay, okay. Well, maybe it's something we can just note into the future because if it's not, then we'll, I guess it would just be further roadbed that we'd have to put on that or gravel. Uh, they have to make sure that the, the way the road's built could support the weight. But I'm sure the engine neared that in there. Okay, okay. Well, maybe if we could um, just double check on that because if it's not, then we'll have to, it would be better to fix that now before we have issues right you're you're smirking at me what did i did i say something <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm losing my internet oh you're losing your internet uh no it should have been engineered into the system okay
Okay, is there any further questions for Dwayne from council? We lost a council member. I wasn't looking at the screen. Did anyone notice Pete say anything or do anything? Okay. Could we just have one of the staff text? Oh, he's there. Okay, Pete, I was concerned something had happened to you. Are you okay? Sorry, my allergies are kicking in. I had to go fix myself. <laughs> okay, <apologize>. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to get the staff to do a check on you. Okay, so if there's no further questions for the public roads, our public works manager will continue on to our economic development officer, Stacy. Would you like to speak to your ro report before I open the floor? I will. Um, just two two short things, as you'll notice in our grant section that we got notices that we were unsuccessful for the um, red funding and also for the seniors except seniors and accessibility inclusive community grant so I did a follow-up debriefing uh, yesterday with the ministry and uh, they said that the um, the grant application was recommended to go to the higher level that we we scored very very well in the high 80s and um, they said that the program was just really over. Um, uh, the word just escaped me. Um, there was too many applications okay. basically that went into the program. Um, she also said that she was going to use horn pain as an example uh, um, when they're doing their uh, debriefing about the, the whole program, potentially that maybe there should be a second level or second intake for this because it was so oversubscribed. And also, she she said that she would mention that um, we scored in the very high 80s, um, very few areas that we didn't get full points, and that it was just a shame that it was so oversubscribed for uh, a small grant um, package, which is only $35,000 is what we applied for. And also, we're going to do a debriefing on the red funding as well to find out um, what happened with that application as well. Okay, great. Thank you for that update, Stacy. Any questions from Council for our Economic Development Officer? Okay, I don't uh, see any. I'm glad that you mentioned the debriefing because that was the note I had, Stacy, on my... I left it that we meet to review and to get our names known and that we and that we are serious about our funding applications. So I'm a believer that we always correct and you know, every even when we don't get funding, it's still we can use it towards our next success. So I'm glad to hear that that's taking place right on. And any idea what the number was that the people were getting funding? Like, was it high 90s? Like, do we got to be like 98 percenters to get money around here? So honestly, when it comes down to it, she started with the meeting with, I can't believe that you didn't get funding. And she said, I normally don't go through your application um, section by section, but there was very few areas that you even lost half a point. Um, so she went through the whole thing and she said, basically their recommendation was yes. But she said there were so many applications that between one and one in 10 or one in 20 applications were getting to the next level. So her recommendation really was um, maybe, maybe that there's different categories for Northern and Southern Ontario and maybe that funding come out again. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for that and thank you for all the staff that helped prepare the two applications. I know it's a lot of work and uh, hopefully we'll be, we'll be part of the next round because it sounds like we did everything right. It's just they ran out of cash before they got to us. So, Okay, is there any further questions for Stacy? Okay, seeing none, I put the motion to a vote to accept the uh, manager reports those in favor and that is carried none opposed okay so moving on we have correspondence action items 8.1 sylvia jones solicitor general 
And here I told you, Gail, I wouldn't need my iPad. Go ahead, Gail. So there's no um, action item coming out of this or so no, no resolution. Um, I just wanted to point out that the mayors and CAOs, I think I put that in my report, but have a training session coming up uh, next week on this. And then um, with council input from the various council meetings and uh, any comments we get outside of the council meeting from council, we will uh, put together a proposal as a group of CAOs to submit to, for the June deadline. Um, and also, of course, including the First Nation communities that would be involved in that catchment area as well. So <clears throat> if you're looking for a resolution, there isn't one uh, there at the moment. Okay, is there any further uh, questions or uh, from council on this item? <clears throat> Councillor Peroff, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, how many communities in total are there in our detachment area? Does uh, anyone I think know? It's, I think it's around eight. There's... Um, a couple of First Nations and then six municipalities, I believe. I could look at the. Well, yeah, and they and they cover Shaplow too, right? So it kind of spans three different districts: Algoma, uh, Sudbury, and uh, what am I forgetting? Oh, uh, Thunder Bay. I because thought they were spanning Thunder three. Uh, is it Thunder Can't Bay? Remember, but, yeah. No, but. Uh, Anyways, I, I don't know right off the top of my head, John, but there are several um, First Nation communities as well as a several municipalities, but I can find that out for you. Do you have a follow-up question, John? Uh, no, sorry, I don't. I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Peroff. Okay, if there's no other further comment on that, we'll move on to 8.2. And this is a support resolution. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda. And John. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Whereas council has received correspondence from the municipality of Kelvin requesting support for universal paid sick days for all Ontario employees. And whereas work in Ontario without paid sick leave often feel forced to work. Sorry about that. Whereas workers in Ontario without paid sick leave often feel forced to work when unwell so that they can feed and support their families and are at risk at losing a paycheck or even their jobs if they stay home. And whereas the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit is temporary, not accessible to all and not usable for the crucial first days of an illness, and whereas had legislated paid sick leave been in place before the global pandemic, lives would have been saved because infection rates would have been reduced. And whereas the lack of paid sick days has especially hurt minorities and vulnerable populations who are often overrepresented in low paying frontline jobs with few benefits and a reduced ability to work from home. And whereas the Ontario Medical Association, 11 Greater Toronto and Hamilton area, GTHA, mayors and chairs representing Ontario's largest municipalities, the editorial board of the Toronto Star, the board, Toronto Board of Health, the Decent Work and Health Network, the Ontario Nurses Association, and several other professional associations representing thousands of healthcare workers have all called on the provincial government to legislate paid sick days. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpane does hereby support the Municipality of Calvin and the Town of M. Hersburg's Council Resolution, endorsing legislated sick leave and calls on the Government of Ontario to permanently legislate universal paid sick days for all workers in Ontario during the pandemic and beyond. 
regardless of works, workplace size, type of work, or immigration status. Be it further resolved that this resolution be sent to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Monty McNaughton, Minister of Labour and Training and Skills Development, for their consideration with copies to Carol Hughes, MP Algoma Manitoulin Capscasing, Michael Mantha, MPP Algoma Manitoulin, the Municipality of Kelvin and the Town of Amherstburg. Amherstburg. Any comment on the support resolution? None? I do have one. I just have one about the whereas. Whereas had le legislative paid sick days been in place before the global pandemic, lives would have been saved because infection rates would have been reduced. Is that data? Like, where's the data for that? Like, I just... Like, I don't know if there's that data. Or, yeah. I don't know if there's data behind it or, or not. We uh, didn't get any information like that with the request. Okay. That's my only issue with the entire resolution is just I, I wouldn't want to make assumptions. <clears throat> Go ahead, Peter. Is this for all employees in the private sector and the Crown? Well, let me just double check here. If it is for all employees in Ontario, is it required to have a, some sort of a... I always fear things like this come up. With, it's basically, a, the intentions are very well-founded, but what ends up happening is you don't need proof. You end up getting a couple of paid holidays. And that's the sad truth of it. I think it is universal paid sick days for all Ontario employees anywhere they work, correct, Gail? It's not like Ontario government. Is is that your question, Peter? Yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's meant for it's meant for everybody, um, and probably even more so um, some of the people who don't have, you know, other benefits that are frontline workers that are maybe in the sector that doesn't uh, make as much money. I think that's the part of the point. Yeah. But there is no, it doesn't say anything about accountability though, because I really do believe in paying employees to stay home when they're sick. But like I, I, I don't want to sound like a cynic. I just, uh, I've seen it so many times where people take advantage of this and end up costing corporations millions of dollars over the years. So are you in favor of the resolution, but it, rewritten with some sort of um that there has to be accountability in it yes and that's where there's a catch-22 because i think it's against the law to require a doctor to know when you're sick okay so, okay uh, sorry i'm not for this no I, I can't i wouldn't be able to i just don't agree with it i really agree i want to be i want it to be publicly known i agree with the idea and whatnot i know what my employees you are home sick, we do compensate, but that's on a case by case basis. I just see so many times where people just take advantage of it. Because this was, we did have uh, stay away, we had eight sick days and people took advantage of it all the time. It is human nature. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, any further comments, Peter? Or? Okay. Councillor Belinda or? or Councillor Belinda Kissmaker or Councillor Paroff? Councillor Paroff, go ahead. I kind of agree with uh, what Peter had brought up. Um, yeah, it should probably be worded a little differently. Um, people could easily take advantage of this sick day thing and it's, I know what happens. So uh, that's all I wanted to say, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Paroff. Councillor Kistermaker Belinda, go ahead. When they're talking about universal, if that happens, universal, I, that's great. But I do see what happens out at the mill. People do take advantage of it. I do see where uh, people do need it because they don't have it. So 
like Peter says, it's uh, it's how you look at it. And it depends on the person. They do take advantage of things. So yes, it's everybody's correct. Yeah. I'm wondering if we were to reword, uh, I think that in this time of this pandemic, there should be sick days. I think people should be able to go home and not feel like their lives are at jeopardy and that their families, that they're not putting further community at risk. But I also, the other thing that uh, just by hearing everybody, it also feels like, okay, we need this. So let's do this now. And it's reactive. So I would rather my thought would be, okay, let's support it in the short term, put a short term policy out there, but then look further in how you can actually create universal paid sick days that are accountable and that people can actually use. So businesses don't feel like they're going to be without staff when they need staff and not be hindered. Would that, does that seem balanced? Council? Councillor Peroff, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I guess we, if, I didn't know that we could uh, reword these uh, support letters, but yes, what you're suggesting is what we should do, yes. Oh yeah, we can definitely, our support is not, they don't dictate the way we support. We support them the way we feel like that aligns with our values and who we mm -hmm. are in horn pain, for sure. We can do that, John, yep. Go ahead, Gail. Well, what I'm thinking is maybe to defer defer this and we can rewrite it and not do it as so much as a support letter for the municipality of Cal Calvin and Amherstburg, but just do Horn Payne's own resolution about universal sick pay or sick days. Yeah, that would we could do that as well. And then we could forward it to them because it it they prompted yeah. us to look at it, right? But I think in governance, like mm -hmm. for like we know that at our own governance table here, we don't want to make reactive decisions and just doing this now, especially like who, what expertise is looking at it when everyone else is busy dealing with the pandemic. But I do think that there needs to be some interim measures taken for people so they don't feel like they, if they're sick, they need to stay home and feel protected. Okay, is there, I'm gonna put that, uh, I, I am in agreement with Gail's suggestion that we defer it. Is there any, if council's in agreement with that, is there any other wording that you would like to give right now so that Gail has good direction on the motion? I think everyone's spoken their piece and Peter, for your, for you to agree with it, is that agreeable, what I had talked about? <coughs> yeah, as long as uh, short term with the pandemic, I, I do agree with it. And again, but I mean, uh, yes, yes, I'd be agreeable to anything that's short term, long term, universal, paid sick days with no accountability, absolutely. But okay. Can you explain it? Yes, I'm, I'm agreeable to Okay, great. Gail, do you feel like you have enough uh, information for a uh, resolution? Okay, great. Okay, council, I'm I'm proposing that council defer this resolution. Those in favor of deferring the resolution? And that is carried, none opposed to defer. Okay, we're moving on to 8.3, Town of Cochrane, request for support. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Whereas the Ontario government announced the closure of 26 youth justice facilities, and whereas the 
Mequam Youth Residence in Cochrane, Ontario is one of the facilities that is scheduled to close effective April 30th, 2021. And whereas children aged 12 to 17 from Northeastern communities will be impacted by this closure. And whereas these children who have increased needs yet limited access to much needed services and supports to assist them with their transition to productive and flourishing with their transition to productive and flourishing adulthood. And whereas the closure of the Mequam Youth Centre, these vulnerable children will find themselves in a facility hundreds or thousands of kilometres away from their communities and their families. And whereas Council has received correspondence from the Town of Co Cochrane requesting support for keeping the Mequam Youth Centre from closing. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornfane does hereby support and endorse the Town of Cochrane's Council Resolution requesting that the province of Ontario reverse their decision to close the youth justice facility in Cochrane, Ontario, known as the Mequam Youth Residence. In order to keep these vulnerable children Sorry, in order to keep these vulnerable children need to be as close as possible to their families and communities. Be it further resolved that this resolution be sent to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Todd Smith, Minister of Children, Youth and Community Services, and the Honourable Greg Rickford, Minister of Indigenous Affairs, for their consideration with copies to Carol Hughes, MP, MP Algoma Manitoulin, Kapiskasing, Michael Mantha, MPP, Algoma Manitoulin, and the Town of Cochrane. Any comment on the motion? Okay, I don't see one from council. I do have a question for Gail. Gail, in the third line where it says, whereas children aged 12 to 17 from Northeastern communities, should we be inserting Northeastern Ontario communities in there? Or does that read that, fine? That, that wouldn't hurt. Okay. Wouldn't hurt. So just that small amendment council to the motion, just it's Northeastern Ontario communities. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, there being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 8.4. Request for support, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and John. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff, whereas Council has received correspondence from the Town of Calden requesting support for the Ontario Government to permanently adopt 988, a national three-digit suicide and crisis hotline, and whereas the Federal Government has passed a motion to adopt 988, a national three-digit suicide and crisis crisis hotline, and whereas the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has increased the demand for suicide prevention services by 200%, and whereas existing suicide prevention hotlines require the user to remember a 10-digit number and go through directories and to be placed on hold, and whereas in 2022 the United States will have a national 988 crisis hotline in place. And whereas the Township of Hornpain recognizes the significance and importance of ensuring critical barriers are removed to those in a crisis who are seeking help. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby endorse the 988 crisis line initiative and supports the Town of Calden's Council resolution. Be it further resolved that this resolution be sent to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Patty Haiju, Minister of Health, and Ian Scott, Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer of Canadian Radio Television and Telecommunications Commission, CRTC, for their consideration, with copies to Carol Hughes, MP Algoma Manitoulin Capscasing, Michael Mantha, MPP Algoma Manitoulin, and the Town of Cal Calden. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, there being none, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried.
Okay, moving on to 8.5, requests for support. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Whereas council has received correspondence from the township of Hudson requesting support for their request from the federal and provincial governments to expand their infrastructure programs to include fire protection as an application stream for Ontario fire departments to be eligible to apply for the programs. And whereas the role of Ontario's 441 fire departments and their approximately 30,000 full part-time and volunteer firefighters firefighters is to protect Ontarians and their property and whereas according to the Ontario Fire Marshal and Emergency Management's latest data in Ontario there are over 11,000 number of loss fires 9,500 no loss fires 784 injur injuries 94 fatalities and over 820 million dollars of estimated loss in 2018 and whereas fire emergencies only make up a portion of the total calls for help received from fire and emergency service departments as they respond to nearly every public emergency, disaster or 911 call. And whereas Ontario's fire department infrastructure deficit continues to grow annually and is almost entirely borne by municipalities and local taxpayers with the majority having populations under 25,000. And whereas due to the antiquated structures and equipment that do not meet current industry standards, the safety of the Ontario public and Ontario firefighters is being jeopardized. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby endorse and support the Township of Hudson's Council Resolution Number 2021-049 that the federal and provincial governments include, include apparatus, training, equipment and structures for fire departments as eligible categories to any future infrastructure program Programs, which will not only provide immediate stimulus to the local, provincial and federal economies given current economic uncertainty, but also ensure the safety of Canadians and dedicated firefighters. Be it further resolved that this resolution be sent to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and the Honourable Laurie Scott, Minister of Infrastructure, for their consideration, with copies to Carol Hughes, MP, at Algoma Manitoulin Capscasing, Michael Mantha, MPP, Algoma Manitoulin, and Ontario Fire Marshal John Pegg, the Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs, and the Township of Hudson. Any discussion on the motion? And those in favour? And that is carried, none opposed. <clears throat> And 8.6, we have the Hungry Bear Restaurant request for support. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Whereas council has received correspondence from the owner of the Hungry Bear, notifying of a change of location for the establishment. And whereas this, with this change of location, a new application for a permanent liquor license to serve alcoholic beverages at the establishment is required. Therefore, be it resolved that the council of the corporation, the township of Hornpain, acknowledges that it has no objections to the application by the Hungry Bear for a permanent liquor license to serve alcoholic beverages providing the establishment meets all the requirements of the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. Be it further resolved that the attached form 0122E agency letter of approval will be provided in support of the application as requested and required. Any discussion on the motion? We'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? And that is carried, none opposed. And 8.7, Township of George Bay, Georgian Bay, request for support. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John, Belinda. Mm -hmm. 
Moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Where is the township has received correspondence from the City of Kitchener and the Township of Georgian Bay requesting support for extension to the Planning Act timelines and is in agreement with the rationale provided? Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby support the City of Kitchener's Council resolution urging the province to review and reconsider the current timelines established for reviewing for review of Planning Act Act applications before an appeal is permitted to the local planning appeals tri tribunal and to return to the timelines that were in effect under Bill 139, the Building Better Communities and Conserving Watersheds Act 2017. Therefore, be it resolved that this resolution has been sent to Honourable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, with his consideration with copies sent to Carol Hughes, MP, Algoma Manitoulin, Capscasing, Michael Mantha, MPP, Algoma Manitoulin, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, and the Township of Georgian Bay and the City of Kitchener. Any discussion on the motion? Go ahead, Belinda. I was just uh, wondering, like, uh, Gail and Stacy, Melissa, like, you guys are going through all this right now. What do you think of these timelines? Just do you think they're, can you give us some input? <laughs> I was just going to say, I was kind of seeing if Stacy was going to unmute, but. Um, I think that uh, specifically for us, we're going to need the time because we're new at it. So I'm in favor of supporting that because um, the people that are asking for it are experienced people who are deal with these things all the time. And yes, they will have more probably to deal with than us. But if they're having difficulty doing it, I can see us having difficulty doing it as well. Thanks. Thank you for the question, Belinda. Any other further comments or questions on the resolution? Or on the motion, sorry. Okay, I put the motion to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, moving on to correspondence information only. Does council have any Oh, first of all, just a second. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Okay, moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the correspondence information-only package attached to the agenda at the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. And before we put it to a vote, is there any comments or items that Council would like to speak to in the information-only? Okay, I just have two items that I'd like to uh, note. So item 9.1, we will be addressing that at our next council meeting and um, the media release will go out after that next meeting. And the second item that I'd like to address that 9.6, the Nuclear Waste Management Organization press release Although that summit had passed, it's March 31st to April 1st, as you know, we didn't have a council meeting, a regular meeting of council to distribute that uh, information, but I did post it on my uh, Facebook page and I believe, did we uh, do anything from the township, Gail, with that as well? You know what, I don't, I don't remember offhand. Yeah, it was circulated as much as we could with the information. And I do believe some of our community members uh, attended because some people did reach out to me. 
So if there's no further questions or comments on the information only section. Okay, I'll put the motion to a vote. Those in favor to acknowledge receipt. Peter, John. Blinda, are you in favor to acknowledge receipt? Yes, okay, that's carried. None opposed. Okay, item 10, there's none. Donations, 11 conference seminars and training, none. So 12, we're on to committee reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please, for item 12.1. Belinda and John. Okay, be it, re oh, sorry, moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpane does hereby acknowledge receipt of the minutes from the Hornpane Public Library Board regular meeting held on the following date, Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, there being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that's carried, none opposed. And we're moving on to 13, new and other business. So 13.1, we'll do the COVID-19 community control group update. And I hand that over to you, Gail. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to start out with uh, the cases in the region. So um, this afternoon, I looked up the, uh, the three uh, district health units in our area. So for the Porcupine Health Unit, there are 529, have been 529 cases so far. Right now, there are 100 active cases and there have been 25 deaths. Uh, the Algoma Public Health has had 304 cases. There are currently 43 active cases and there have been four deaths uh, and two in hospital at the moment. And the Thunder Bay District Health Unit has had 3,029 cases with 52 current cases being active, 61 deaths, uh, seven in hospital, and two of those are in ICU. Uh, and just in our area today, we've had 18 new cases announced, um, which was probably yesterday's cases, but they were announced today. And just uh, out of 529 cases that have been in our area, 362 cases have been since the beginning of April. So just to reiterate, the messaging that the health, health unit is putting out, you know, stay home, only go out for essential reasons, for exercise, for medical appointments, for work or for grocery shopping, limit your trips. Uh, encourage others that you see to uh, to do the same. Um, I, I do think I noticed a difference this week in um, the youth I've seen gathering uh, in the last few weeks um, and hanging out together. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking that as a positive. Um, one of the other things that the health unit is saying is, and it's evident in the uh, numbers, is that a lot of these uh, outbreaks are happening in workplaces and it's coming from, even though people may be wearing their PPE in their workstations, uh, they're then maybe going to the lunchroom or the coffee room and, and sitting down and taking off their, their masks and eating together. So. Um, that's becoming a real issue. So if you have workplaces, just maybe ensure that those uh, protocols are being followed and people are continuing to social distance. Um, schools are another place that uh, we're seeing outbreaks in, and, and I guess that's not going to happen for a while now because the schools are at home. But um, um, that has been, we're, we're still seeing cases coming out of, of schools uh, today. Um, Higher incidence of the variants of concern. So on our ministry call yesterday, they were saying that it's 68 to 70% of the um, positivity is coming out as variants of concern. So they're really spreading quickly. Um, that's an overall provincial number. I'm not sure exactly what our number is here, but we do have some, which is concerning. Um, and then I wanted to uh, just mention that we, 
uh, at our last CCG meeting, we were talking about how uh, people are getting sick of listening to our messaging and we think we're only re reaching the people that sort of want to be reached that use Facebook and that use our signboard and, and whatnot. So we're looking at doing some different types of messaging to try and reach different sectors of the population. So we've um, purchased some um, smart TVs, some small smart TVs, we got a really good price for them. And we're in the process of uh, speaking to businesses to see if they will let us um, put those up in their locations. And then we're going to be, you know, circling, cycling some uh, videos and, and uh, you know, one worders and hopefully some testimonials if we can get those on there, just cycle those things through in each location, hoping to catch people's attention that way. Uh, we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, talked about doing something on CFNO. We talked about doing something on television at a higher level, whether it's uh, regional or um, provincial, uh, pushing for that. Um, and there was something else I was going to say. Um, oh yes, we were talking about doing a mail out. So um, just getting some, some wording together for that. Uh, tried to put a little, a uh, few different things out in the last couple of days. We actually had, the staff had a, a mental health workshop Honestly, I don't even remember if it was today or yesterday, but anyways, the latest poster that we put out, um, I took the, the uh, sayings from the woman on the, on the course. I thought it was good. And again, it's, it's it eluding me right now. Obviously, my memory is not what it used to be, uh, but it's something like kindness hasn't been canceled. Uh, um, I don't know. Help me out, guys. I can't remember what it was. You'll see it on our website or on our Facebook page. But it was very succinctly put. It was something different, and it was. Go ahead, Melissa. <laughs> Compassion is not quarantine, and hope is not. I don't remember that last word. Distant. Deferred. Oh, yeah. Distant. There. <laughs> so, anyways, I, I I thought it was a thank you. I thought it was a kind of catching, and it was it was positive, and it was just another way of saying please be kind, and um, something something different for people to see. So, anyways, I thought it was catchy. Um, other than that, we talked about the four vaccine clinics that we've had so far at the arena, and they've gone very well, well attended. There's a lot of uh, a positive um, um, feedback from them. The uptake has been good. Uh, I don't know if it'll be as good with the younger generation or not, um, but it's been good so far. Um, and they should be moving on to essential workers fairly soon, I think, in, in one of the upcoming clinics. So um i leave it there i think i've covered everything i wanted to um we continue with our meetings we have another one tomorrow so yes that's all i had so mayor ford if you had anything you'd like to add to that thank you for your update gail the only thing i want to add is that we're over 430 vaccines uh, distributed with the first dose in horn pain so we're somewhere around the 50 percent mark of our um population that is eligible to get the vaccine of those who want the vaccine so that's good news um, I did uh, reach out to uh, the Porcupine Health Unit today to find out about our upcoming clinics and they will be scheduled sometime in the next two weeks and we'll hear about that but I think there's a lot of effort and everything put towards our vaccination rollout and I can't say enough of how just seeing people work together and volunteers coming out so that's the only thing that I have to add. And and I just uh, reiterate Gail's comments about this being serious and hopefully we get these numbers down. So, and do our part individually. Is there any questions for Gail in the COVID update report? Okay, there being, I don't see any. The one final thing that I have given consideration to and I have been thinking, just so that you know where my mind's at on this, is that we did put our community into emergency in uh, the beginning of April last year, and I don't see us lifting that anytime in the near future. I uh, think it's imperative that we keep track and show that we're still in emergency. We Our facilities aren't running at the regular pace. We're not, commu we're not, um actively involved in our community like a regular day before pre-covid so until we see that in the future i i don't see us lifting it anytime soon i did have a bit of short discussion with gail about this i think about a month ago or so now gail but uh 
I don't see it in the, I think we're going to continue keeping our emergency control group going to ensure we get our community through this safely. Go ahead, Gail. And just to add to that, I think all the, uh, the organizations and services that sit on that uh, community group, you know, the health unit, the hospital and the OPP ambulance, uh, schools, they've all expressed that they'd like that they'd like to contact every week. They like everybody communicating and keeping each other up to date. So I think that's a real positive. Yes, thank you for that, Gail. Okay, if there's no further discussion on our COVID-19 situation in the community control group, we'll move on then to 13.2, uh, the Cemetery Trust Fund. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. <clears throat> Peter? And Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpane, does hereby authorize the Treasurer to transfer $1,300 into the Cemetery Care and Maintenance Fund. This amount represents the period from January 1st to December. Jan January 1st to December 31st, 2020. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, there being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 13.3, setting a special meeting. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby set a special meeting in a virtual meeting room for the following reasons. Date, May 19th, 2019, sorry. May 19th, 2021, time 6 p.m. And the two items are update and discussion, water and wastewater rate study and water financial plan, Watson and Associates Limited, and the presentation and discussion, municipal financial and planning tools, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, there being none, I'll put that to the vote. Oh, John, go ahead. I was Council just uh, comment seeing that it overlaps the Phnom conference. So I'm assuming the Phnom conference will be done by the time the meeting starts. I didn't actually look at that, John. I didn't even think of that, but I usually they're like done about five and actually I find the virtual conferences are ending usually at four. So um, I'll have a look at that though. Thanks for bringing that up. Thanks. I do have uh, an answer to John's question. So Phenom this year is running on a pre-recorded YouTube channel. There will be certain sessions like the bear pit and that um, that are pre-recorded questions, but um, at our Algoma District Municipal Association meeting on Saturday, Danny Whelan, the president of Phnom, was there and gave an update about Phnom, and it is free this year for anyone that would like to attend and watch any of the sessions, so that's great as well. So I think you should be okay, John. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I put that uh, motion to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, we have 13.4 draft bylaw. Gail, would you like to, or Dwayne, would you like to speak to this or Gail? I can. Um, basically, we want to reduce the uh, we want to reduce the speed limit. If, if my internet will stay up here long enough, um, they're trying to reduce the speed going through town. Uh, basically, concern from the citizens of Hornpain and 
also for our own concerns that people are traveling through town quite quickly. Lots of kids are playing on the highway section. We're trying to slow the speed down to 40 kilometers an hour. Okay, so from go ahead, Gail. Did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. I had my head down. Go ahead, Gail. Yeah, that's okay. I was I was just gonna say that we um can't pass this bylaw until it's approved by the ministry. So what Dwayne's uh proposed there's outlined sort of step by step where where each sign would be and where uh the the um warning signs would be for when the um speed's going to be switching. So it's just kind of a, a a footprint, I guess, of what of what the signage would look like. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And I guess at this time, if there's any comment from council, they would say it now or forever hold your peace on it. Go ahead, Councillor Peroff. Thank you, Mayor. I was just wondering if um, somebody had approached and talked to the OPP on uh, enforcement protocols for that road. Go ahead, Gail. We actually have, uh, Mayor, per uh, Mayor, Councillor Peroff, we had a, a meeting with the OPP probably about a month ago now, and we brought that up and several area, other problem areas in town up, so they're uh, working on having an eye on that. Okay, okay thank you, Gail. Thank you, Councillor Peroff. Any comments on the draft bylaw as proposed? Just so Council knows, I have no comments. <laughs> Dwayne smiling. I can see your smile in that sunny room you're sitting in. Okay, no further comments then. Uh, so we don't need a resolution. This is going to go to the ministry first and then it'll come back to us to pass. Correct. Okay, Correct. sounds good. So uh, we're moving on to 13.5, council committee updates. And I uh, put this out to council. Any updates? I'm seeing an abundance of head shaking. No. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Peroff, go ahead. No, I was just going to say we. Uh, the only exciting thing we ha happened was uh, Nagagami Forest. Uh, the end. <laughs> the NLC uh, meeting was cancelled, so we didn't even have that. So it was pretty quiet since. Uh, since last time. <laughs> so were you pleased about that? Was that exciting news? Woohoo! <laughs> we don't have to do anything. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that update. So uh, the only two updates that I have, I mentioned the um, Algoma District Municipal Association meetings on Saturday. It was really good to see everybody and meet. And we talked about uh, broadband. I will be following up with you, Gail, about this. Um, just, I wanna reach out to a few of the other mayors because um, Phnom is putting together some information to write to the government about the broadband funding. The issue is, is they're concerned that mega corporations are able to apply for the funding on the behalf of smaller community communities and then does that take our funding away and are they actually going to bring fiber to the home and we actually with our broadband meetings that we've had over the course of the last uh, several months now i know um we had had this discussion and asking, it was uh, one of the support letters that we had asking actually how much in the application was for Horn Pain. So um, that still has to be followed up with and I will probably be drafting a letter with the help of Gail Tufanom on our behalf for that. And um, the other item was I had Ontario Good Roads meetings and I have been able to, um, 
have our first diversity, equity and inclusion committee meeting that I'm going to be chairing on behalf of Ontario Good Roads. And um, it went really well. And I am hoping into the future we can bring, I'll be able to bring back some information on that and help to build inclusion for our own community. And other than that, I don't have any other updates. I, uh, other than those two meetings, those uh, several meetings, but those two commitments. Go ahead, Gail. So um, I'm interested in your diversity and equity and inclusion committee because Shannon has been working on um, getting some of that kind of training into council because we had passed a resolution, uh, I believe it was last year, um, committing to committing to doing some of that some oh my goodness some type of training of that nature. So maybe um, I can connect you to when she's back and see if there's any you know we don't want to duplicate anything either if you have resources that she might be able to contact, that would be good. And the other thing is just in uh, Councillor Stefanik's uh, absence, um, he didn't ask me to speak to this, but um, people are probably wondering about the Centre of Ontario. So uh, um, still in the process of talking with the MNR and the land surveyor about um, getting a survey done. And the last I spoke to the MNR, he is encouraging us and Dwayne I haven't really got a chance to speak to you on this but we're meeting later in the week so this was one of the things I want to discuss is um, he's encouraging us to stay within that of course municipal corridor that we have that's shown on one of those maps um, so what he's looking for is for somebody i.e Dwayne to go out and kind of have a look at the at the land and see what the topography is and see if it's even suitable or if you think it's suitable and then we have to somehow find a way of, of trying to sort of pinpoint as, as much as we can the area that we would like surveyed so that they're not going out and doing twice as much as we need. But uh, MNR is, is definitely encouraging a survey because things change. And as, as we know, um, if things aren't in place, um, you know, when 10 years down the line, when something happens and you've got this tourism, um, um, tourism destination uh, up and running, uh, if there's a complication, um, you know, it, it, it's not good. I, it would just, I think, it, I think getting a formal survey done would, would eliminate or mitigate any of those things from happening. I think it'll set us for the future. So we have to uh, sort of do a bit of footwork first and then uh, MNR has, has uh, finally come back and said that they actually don't need to uh, prescribe where we get the survey and we won't need any permits other than a trail permit if we are able to stay within our municipal boundary. So um, if it's, it might be a bit funny shaped uh, in the end, but if, if we can do that, it's gonna simplify things a lot more. So Dwayne, we can speak more to that on uh, Friday morning. Okay, thank you for that update, Gil. Uh, Councillor Peroff, did you have a question? Oh, okay, I see you're muted now. Okay, if there's no further committee updates, we'll move on. Uh, resolutions, we're doing as we go, bylaws. And I, I had this in my notes to mention this during the presentation to Miles and I missed it. <laughs> okay, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1856, being a bylaw to enter into a transfer payment agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and Her Majesty the Queen in right of the Province of Ontario, represented by the Office to the Ontario Fire Marshal regarding the Fire Safety Grant Program, be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the motion or on the bylaw? There being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. So 
So when they said that was quick turnaround, that was pretty quick turnaround. He had what, like five days to submit that and then they're already sending out the checks? <laughs> okay. Moving on to 15.2, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John and Belinda. Okay, before I read this resolution, I want to take note that the resolution is on the agenda package included with uh, the municipal website, and I will only be reading the actual house locations, not the legal descriptions of items A to J. So, moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that bylaw number 1857 being a bylaw to authorize the sale of 10 properties as listed by the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain, which are not required for the purposes of the municipality, be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. A, 18 Willow, Hornpain, Ontario. B, 17 Cedar Street or Cedar Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. C, 19 Cedar Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. D, 21 Cedar Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. E, 23 Cedar Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. F, 52 Fourth Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. G, 23 Murphy Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. H, 211 Third Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. I, 161 Third Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. J, 85 Third Avenue, Hornpain, Ontario. Be it further resolved that Council hereby instructs the CAO and the Municipal Solicitor to complete all necessary work and prepare all documents to complete the transfer as outlined in the agreement. All legal fees and disbursements are the responsibility of the purchaser. Be it finally re resolved that Gail Jeremy, CAO Clerk, is hereby authorized to sign all necessary documents on behalf of the municipality to complete the transfer. And those in favor? And that is, or sorry, I should say, is there any comment or discussion on the bylaw or our motion? Sorry about that, Council. And those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, 15.3, Long Range Waste Management Plan. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John and Peter. Moved by John Peroff, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that bylaw number 1858 being a bylaw to authorize a professional services agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and EXP Services Incorporated for the preparation of the long range waste management plan for the Township of Hornpain be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. And just for clarification, Gail, is it EXP? Is that how, yes? Okay. It is EXP, correct. Okay, thank you for that. Any discussion on the motion or the bylaw? Okay, and I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on with our agenda, 16, there are none, and 17, none, 
18, we're moving into a closed session. For those um, people that are with us here at Council tonight, we are going to move into a closed session and you should have received a second meeting link for the second portion of the meeting. When you come back to join us, please join into that second meeting link and you can see the, the close of our meeting at that time. And uh, Council as well, let's uh, move, if I can get a mover and a seconder to close up, to move into closed session. Belinda and Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the next portion of the meeting at 7.34 p.m. be closed to the public in order to discuss the security of the property of the municipality or local board pursuant of section 239.2a of the Municipal Act 2001. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed? Okay, council, we'll meet you in closed. <laughs>